before we take uh, a z-stack in a single channel, uh, one last thing that we need to determine is the appropriate exposure time and laser power. So um, what we recommend is that when you're looking at the sample, you keep the laser power at 10% and modify the quality of the image by adjusting the exposure time. The reason is to minimize bleaching. Uh, if we were to increase the laser power um, and just leave uh, a high laser power on the sample for many seconds as we're moving around, um, that could lead to bleaching of sheets of the sample. And so we want to avoid that. And so what we do instead is we adjust the signal to noise by adjusting the exposure time uh, to the level that we want. And then right before we're about to image is when we try to minimize the exposure time and get the quality we want by increasing the laser. So let's first see what kind of quality we have and uh, whether we need to modify the exposure time. So this is our current uh, ex with an exposure time of 250 uh, milliseconds. That's the quality. I would say it's OK, but maybe not great. So let's double the exposure time and see what happens to the quality. Now, obviously, the image will get brighter. But what we want is to understand what happens with the contrast. So I'm going to double this parameter down here. And you can see everything looks much smoother. I doubled this because we doubled the exposure to kind of have an image of sort of similar brightness. You can see this looks much better. What if we go to 800? <clears throat> So you can see the quality looks quite good. What if we go to 1600? I'm going to double this. So between 1600 and 800, there doesn't seem to be a huge difference. So maybe an 800 millisecond exposure is going to give us the quality that we want. Now, the thing is, an 800 millisecond exposure with 500 images, that's a very long time. So we don't want to take an exposure of 800 milliseconds when we're actually taking the Z stack. But we do want the quality of an 800 millisecond exposure time. So how are we supposed to manipulate this uh, so that we can get both speed and quality? So the way we do that is we counterbalance exposure time with laser power. Now, the way this works is as follows. The quality is going to be roughly dependent on the total amount of, uh, of light that the sample receives. Whether it receives it because you expose for a long time or the laser is on for a long time, uh, both will give you roughly the same quality, um, but one will do so uh, with a much higher risk for, for bleaching, whereas the other will cost you a lot of time. Uh, when we're taking a Z stack, we want to minimize time. Bleaching is not such a huge concern in light sheet because you're only illuminating what you're looking at, and if you illuminate it, uh, very briefly, uh, it tends not to be a problem. So we want, uh, if possible, to lower the exposure time as much as we can, but get the same quality by increasing the laser power. So how do we balance these things? So the first thing to keep in mind is if you lower the exposure down to 10 milliseconds, you will receive benefits. If you lower the exposure time below 10 milliseconds, uh, there are other rate limiting steps, and so you don't really have any benefits. But if we could get it down to 10 milliseconds, uh, we would reap some rewards in terms of how long it takes to image this sample. So 10 milliseconds is 80 times less than 800 milliseconds. So based on what I told you, to get the same quality, but with a 10 millisecond exposure, we would need 80 times more laser power. So how can we get 80 times more laser power? Is that even possible? So this slider, you can see if I move it, it changes this percentage. Um, so this is something that's very confusing about this instrument, but when you change this, this is not the percent laser power, even though it says percent and it's in a box that says laser power. This is percent of movement of uh, an optical component that changes the laser power nonlinearly. According to a relationship that is uh, pasted on the wall of this room, and that's also in uh, my light sheet guide. Uh, so let's see if I can find it here um, so you can see what I mean. Here we go. So this same graph is on the wall of this room. Um, and so what this graph shows you is the software setting for laser power, and then the actual laser power relative to 10%, which I just made arbitrarily one. And I did that because that's the, um, the setting um, 
uh, that's the default for the software. So the actual laser power relative to 10 uh, that, that, that's measured at the sample. And so you can see that when we're, for example, at 80% laser power as terms of settings, that is actually 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 times brighter than when we're at 10% laser power. Okay, so because this is a nonlinear scale. So, so then let's go back to the issue of if we have an exposure time of 800 where we like the results, can we lower that down to 10 with 80 times more laser power? So if we look here, you'll see this is 100, 90, 80. So 80 corresponds to about, uh, so 80 times more laser power than at 10% corresponds to a setting of 90 or 100%. What that means is if I set this to 10 milliseconds and then the laser power to 100 and I have to hit apply, then I will get similar quality. Now I'm going to show you very briefly that this is true. So let me show you here. <clears throat> Uh, unfortunately, I didn't give it enough time to do both sides. Um, but you can see that the quality is quite good. So just basically trust the graph that the quality is going to be um, the same if you have the same total amount of laser power. And before you start a Z-Stack, uh, figure out what exposure time you would want with a laser of 10%, and then flip it so that this is as small as possible, so it's as close to 10 milliseconds as you can, uh, and just increase the laser power. Now let's say instead if I wanted an exposure, so if I had decided that the exposure I wanted with the laser at 10% was 1600, so something like this, so if I had something like this, I would need 160 times more laser power. Now I can't get that and having a with a 10 millisecond exposure time. It's just not possible. I, 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 it doesn't go up as far. So if you were in a situation like that, what you would do is have a 20 millisecond exposure time and then set it so that the, the software setting is at 100%. So you have 80 times more for 10 milliseconds. But since you have 20, now that would mean you have 160 times more laser power. So there's a little bit of arithmetic involved, but just use this graph and you can figure out how to make uh, get the equivalent quality in much less time. And this is a big deal because this really cuts down on your imaging time significantly.